All right, so can everyone hear me? Wonderful. So again, my name is Angela, and I am a software engineer at Google. And I'm really excited to be here to talk to you all about how I became a software engineer, because this is not the job that I thought I would have when I was you all's age. So a lot of the engineers that I know, there we go. So a lot of engineers that I know have had a pretty straightforward career path, right? Maybe at a very young age, they were exposed to coding. They joined maybe a robotics club in high school, and they go to college and study computer science. And they graduate college, and they go off to a great tech company and start their career as a software engineer. So that wasn't exactly my path at all. My path was a little bit more like this. So I had a lot of different careers along the way before I got to software engineering. In fact, there were three different times in my life where I was pursuing three different careers actively. And my very first one started when I was about you all's age, when I had my first dream job. So who here already has an idea of what they want to be when they grow up? Yeah? Let me hear them. What do you want to be? A doctor. Does anybody else here want to be a doctor? A few people? You have some future coworkers? What else? What do you want to be? A mathematician. Very nice. Any other people interested in math? Couple? Awesome. Okay, one more. Let's hear one more. Here in the back. What do you want to be? A chemist or an engineer. Do we have any other chemists or engineers in the audience? Awesome. That's really exciting. So you all have some really cool dream jobs that you wanted to want to be right now. And I also had a dream job. And my first dream job was wanting to be an actress. So the people you see up on the TV and the movie screens. And I want to tell you a little bit about how I got to wanting to become an actress. But first, I want to tell you a bit more about me and where I come from and my family. So I am originally from Arkansas, born and raised. Oh, are you from Arkansas? Yay, you were born in Little Rock. So I am from Lone Oak, which is right outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. Has anyone else ever been to Arkansas? OK, got a couple people. <laughs> so could people find Arkansas on a map if I showed you the United States? Could anyone point it out? All right, one person, the person who's from born in Little Rock. So usually when I tell people I'm from Arkansas, the first thing they say is like, oh, I've never met anyone from Arkansas, and where is that on the map? So just in case you're a little unsure about where Arkansas is, it's directly above Louisiana, right below Missouri. So we're a southern state there. So now that you know where I'm from, I want to tell you a little bit about my family. And so this is me over there in the corner when I was about two years old. And up there in the center is me with my parents and my older sister. She's only about 18 months older than me, so we were really close growing up. And I was really close to all of my family, actually. And so it's kind of hard sometimes being way out here in California and all my family still back out in, Cal in Arkansas. And so I still call home every day. I call my parents on my way home from work just to say, hey, and I love you. Because you know your parents are still your parents even when you don't live with them anymore, right? And they want to hear from you still. So I keep in touch when I can, and that's how I stay connected to home. And so this is the house that I grew up in. My parents actually still live there today. And this picture is taken from the very back of our backyard. So as you can see, we had a lot of space to run and play around in growing up. But as you can also see, there's not much else in this picture. You see some trees in the background. There's not a lot going on where I grew up. And so my sister and I had to keep ourselves entertained a lot of the times because there weren't a ton of kids around for us to play with. So we were each other's playmates. And so we kept ourselves entertained by playing various games. So this is us in the pool hanging out. And we like to use our imaginations to make up games. So you didn't really need much going on. And so I think we would play like Little Mermaid in the pool. I don't even know how you play Little Mermaid, but we played it growing up. Um, and then this bottom picture here, does anybody know what we're doing in this picture? What are we doing? Yeah, we're shucking corn. So that's where you take the husk off of corn. And even that was fun, because like, what are the country kids going to do, right? <laughs> And so in addition to these things, we also got to the point where we liked to record ourselves on little cassette tapes. So we made up a whole talk show. Because my sister was a little older than me, the show was named after her. So it was the April show. I didn't get an Angela show. It's OK. But we did all the voices. She was the host. And we did guest speakers. And I did all the voices for the guest speaker. And we just liked to pretend and hang out. So that was one of the things we did for fun. But we also watched a lot of TV, because kids like watching TV, right? And so that's actually how I discovered that I wanted to be an actress, was watching TV. And there was one show in particular that, trick, uh, that got me interested in this. And it was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Has anyone ever heard of this show? Yes, OK, great. <laughs> I thought that no one would have heard of it. So in case you haven't, these are Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They are crime-fighting teenagers in spandex. And I loved this show, right? And so after watching uh, an episode of this show one day, I happened to stick around and see a behind the scenes look that they were showing of the making of the episode. And it was really fascinating to me because 
Even though I knew like Power Rangers aren't real, they're not really teenagers fighting crime out in the world, I never put two and two together that, wait, these are just normal people like me who get paid to do this? That's what me and my sister are doing, you know? We're like making our talk shows, we're pretending to be other people, I could get paid to do this. And so that's what got me interested in wanting to be an actress. And so all through high school, that's what I pursued. And so here are some pictures of me and some plays I was in in high school. So I was in some Western and we were dancing bandits coming to take over a saloon. And this is us in um, a Victorian period piece. So I love dressing up and pretending and getting on stage and performing. And in the summers I did theater camps and went to a college prep program where I majored in drama. So I was really committed to being an actress. Um, and so I was so committed that, in being an actress that I decided when it was time to apply for school that I wanted to go to New York City go to NYU and major in theater. I would graduate, be an actress, fame and fortune, here I come. That was my plan. And so I actually did. I went to New York University to audition for their theater department during my senior year of high school. And I, it was my first time flying on a plane, went out to the city, first time in a big city, auditioned, all excited, got back home, and then my parents sat me down for a talk. You know it's serious when your parents have to sit you down for a talk, right? And so they sat me down and they said, look, it seems like you're really serious about being an actress because they just brought me back from New York City. And they gave me basically a little reality check because in my head I was like, I'm gonna graduate from college and then I'm gonna instantly be a famous superstar, right? Like that's how it works. And they gave me a little bit more detail about the process that it takes to be up on the big screen, which involves like going to a lot of auditions, not making a lot of money, you might have a hard time, and they said you might end up coming right back here to Lone Oak, Arkansas, and living with us until you figure out what you're gonna do with your life. And that didn't sound very appealing to me once they explained it to me. And I know I could have gone off and done it, but I decided to choose a different path, and instead major, uh, go to Northwestern University, where I ended up majoring in communication studies. So it's a much broader category than just theater. Um, and so that was where I first did my first career shift into thinking that, okay, I'm gonna actually just be a communications professional. And so that's what I did. Um, and I studied communications, and this is about studying how people talk to each other, whether it's through words, whether it's through writing, or whether it's through visual arts, like uh, theater, for example, it's a way of communicating with people. And so I got a lot of experience in this field because this was my new career path, and I did a lot of summer internships. Does everyone know what an internship is? Can someone tell me what that means? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so that's, that's exactly right. It's getting practice at a job while you're a student. And some of the internships actually do get, uh, you do get paid. And so um, I did some summer internships. All of them were paid. And so I did two summers at the Arkansas Democrat Gazette where I wrote um, and published a few articles um, over the summer. I also worked at Whirlpool Corporation, the people who do you know, the appliances and things, in their corporate communications department. And this is a department that handles all the internal communications when a company wants to send a message out to their employees. So I worked on that team and I interned at Google as well in 2008 and I also did their corporate communications department. And so I have all this communications experience so I'm like, all right, it's time to graduate. I'm gonna go off into the world, I'm gonna be a communications professional. I was graduating with you know, a major in communication studies, I also did a double minor in English and film and media studies and I also got a certificate in creative writing for the media which is where we learned how to do TV pilots and screenplays and stage plays. Again, all of this is about communicating with people and I thought that's what I would do. But I didn't get a job in the communications field. So when I did my internship at Google, they allow you to do uh, interviews at the end to get a full-time offer, and I got a full-time offer. But unfortunately, when I was graduating, it was 2009, and this was a really hard year for the economy, which means that a lot of companies weren't hiring. Google was thankfully hiring, but they weren't hiring in every department. And so even though I interned in the communications department, they couldn't put me there. And so I ended up in the human resources department. And so that began my third shift in my career into being a human resources professional. And so human resources is just the people who make sure that the employees of the company are doing well and are taken care of. And so that's where I spent um, actually seven years when I was at Google in the HR department. And so you may be asking, okay, you started at Google in HR, how did you end up as a software engineer? Well, I actually discovered programming pretty early on in my time at Google, and it was my first exposure to anything um, like that because I hadn't gone to a program like this when I was your age. And it happened because another Googler who was also in HR was offering this intro to programming class, and it was targeted specifically for non-technical people like me, 
and they wanted to show that, hey, just because you're not an engineer doesn't mean that you can't use code to make your lives easier, right? Because every job has those boring manual tasks that you know, a person has to sit there and copy paste and click around and do things that aren't very fun. But if you could write a script really quickly and make the script do it for you, then you could spend more time focused on the exciting things. And so I wanted to take this class because I had already done a lot of pretty boring manual things in my jobs working at HR. And I took this programming class and absolutely loved it. And so um, I was really excited when I had a chance to use what I learned in that class on an actual project at work. So my team needed to generate thousands of reports to give out to different people because we had just run a survey and we wanted to share out our results. But we had a script that was broken and no one on my team knew how to fix it and there weren't any engineers around to help us. And so the options were, we're either gonna have to manually create thousands of reports, like who wants to do that, or we're just not gonna have reports at all. Those were the two options. And so since I had just taken this programming class, I figured why not give it a try and see if I could fix the script. And I was able to. And I remember the moment that I got the script to work to generate the reports in a matter of minutes, that feeling of excitement was like really amazing for me. And that's what got me to say, what am I doing right now and how can I do it forever? Because I loved having that power of telling a computer to do something and it would actually do it and it saved a lot of time for the team. And so that's when I started exploring and figuring out, oh wait a minute, this is what software engineers do. And I'm at a company, Google, that has a ton of software engineers. And so that's when I decided that I wanted to make the journey into trying to become a software engineer. And so I started taking classes in the evenings and on the weekends. So I would work all day in my full-time HR job and come home in the evening and study computer science concepts. And it got to the point where I needed to even you know, turn my dining room table into my coding workstation because classes I was taking were really intense. And you know, anytime you're learning something for the first time, it's really hard. And so there were a lot of moments where I was like, I don't know if I'm smart enough to be an engineer because my coding classes were hard, I was having a hard time keeping up, but the thing that I've learned over time is that everything is hard in the beginning. When you're learning something new, it can be a little difficult. For example, like how many people here know their ABCs? Everyone's hand should go up. Everyone knows their ABCs, right? And how many people think it's easy to say your ABCs, right? Everyone could easily say your ABCs. But I don't know if you remember when you were young enough when you were learning your ABCs, I'm sure it wasn't very easy for you to learn them at first, you know? It's a lot of characters to have to remember. But as you get older and after you repeat it over and over again, your ABCs are nothing. And it's very similar with um, engineering and coding. Once you do it enough times, things start to get easier. I'm not saying the job is easy, but it gets easier over time. And so I spent a lot of time trying to learn how to code. I did technical projects at work, trying to get experience. And then eventually I got enough experience to where I could actually transfer to be on an engineering team full time. And so that transfer actually just happened last year in May 2017. And so when I first said that I wanted to be an engineer, it was 2011. So if I started in 2011 and I didn't become an engineer until 2017, how long did that take me to get there? Six years, right? Yeah, that's a really long time to be pursuing a goal, but that's sometimes what it takes when you want to pursue a very big goal. And I was going after a very big goal. Right? I wasn't trained in computer science. I wasn't trained how to be a software engineer in college. This was something I was picking up as an adult. And so it took a really long time to get there. But what I will say is that I didn't realize how big of a deal this might be to some people. So once I finally got the transfer, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna tell a few of my friends, call it a day, no one's gonna care about this. Google's a company where you can transfer pretty easily between different jobs, so people are transferring all the time. So who would care about my transfer? But I told one of my friends, I was like, it's official, I'm an engineer now, and this is one of my friends who had been with me through the whole six years kind of thing, and she knew that I was interested in this. She was so excited for me that she wanted to share the news out with uh, some of my other people at the company who were in this group called the Black Googler Network. So internally, Google had these things called employee resource groups, and these are people who can form communities internally based around their identity. So I'm part of the one that's the Black Googler Network, and it's for people who identify as black, and she wanted to share with them, you know, like we did, someone did something amazing. And she did, and the outpour of like, love and support that I got from that group was amazing. Everyone was saying how excited and proud and honestly how inspired they were by the story. And so these are some of the memes that I got, or sorry, the gifts that I got from people 
went in the emails and they were saying congratulations on doing this transfer. And I was amazed at how excited people were about this and I didn't expect this. And so one thing I wanna share with you all is that when you do something amazing, I think it's really important to share it with your friends and with your family because you never know who could be inspired by your story. If they see that you've done something amazing, it helps them see, well, I'm friends with that person. I could probably do something amazing too. So I would just encourage you, like whenever you do something great, make sure you share that out with people. Okay, so that's my winding journey into becoming a software engineer, right? It wasn't very straightforward. And when I first became a software engineer, I used to kind of get a little frustrated that I didn't have that straightforward path that I mentioned in the beginning. Because, you know, I'm, I'm working alongside other engineers, some of them younger than me, who I feel know a little bit more than me. And I'm like, ah, if I had just started when I was like you all's age, getting into tech, I could have been a lot further along by now. And, and that used to really get me down sometimes. But the longer I've been in this role, I've realized that all these experiences I've had have actually really benefited me as a software engineer, um, even though they aren't directly related. So software engineering is coding. You do code a little bit, but there's more to the job than that. So for example, you sometimes have to get up and give presentations, because if you want to build something, you sometimes have to convince people or explain to people what you want to build, and that requires getting up in front of a group of people and giving a presentation. And I feel that my experience when I was pursuing acting got me really comfortable with being on a stage and getting in front of people, and so I can use that skill um, even though I'm a software engineer now. Similarly, when I was in the communications field, I got a lot of experience writing things down, right? I, I wrote at the newspaper, I wrote a lot of internal communications, and as a software engineer, sometimes you have to write a design document. Does anyone know what the, a design document is? Has anyone heard of this? No? So a design document is something that engineers have to write usually before they start coding. So you have to say, this is what I plan to build and this is how it's gonna look and you write it out like in plain English before you get to the technical part of like writing the code for it. And so I find that I have an easier time writing design documents than some other engineers may who didn't have as much writing experience as I have in the past. And then likely with the um, human resources side of things, like I really got to understand the human side of working with employees. A lot of times we can forget, especially when we're doing like code reviews for other engineers, you're just at a computer screen, you're giving them feedback, and sometimes you can forget that there's a, a human, a person on the other end gonna read that feedback. And so sometimes people can be a little uh, blunt or rude in their code reviews, and so I make sure that I try to be as nice as possible in my code reviews, making sure people understand that I'm just helping them learn and not saying that they're like stupid for making some mistake in their code review. So that helped me also understand the human side of being a software engineer. And so even though it wasn't a very straight path, I'm using things from all of these fields to help me in my job today. And so I know that I've said a lot of things, and you might not remember a lot of it, so I just wanna leave you with three things um, for you to remember as, um, when you leave here. So the first thing is like, I encourage you all to appreciate all the experiences you have. So like you saw, I went through a lot of different things before I got to software engineering, and all of those things are valuable to me now, even though I'm not an actress or not a communications professional and not in HR anymore. And I appreciate all that I went through because it helps me in the job that I have today. So I encourage you, whatever you're pursuing now and whatever you end up doing in the future, just appreciate everything that you do along the way. The second thing, again, like I mentioned, I hope that you all will share your accomplishments with other people. Whenever you do something great, share it with your friends. Let them know that they can go off and do great things as well. And then finally, I really encourage everyone to learn how to code no matter what job you wanna be. So whether it's a doctor, or whether it's a chemist, like you're gonna have some manual tasks that you have to do. And if you know how to write a quick script to help you get through that manual task, again, you can focus on the more interesting parts of your job. And so I encourage anyone, even if you don't wanna be an engineer, to learn how to code a little bit and you're all in a great place to learn how to do that. And so that's all that I have. Um, and so if I have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right, so if you all have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. We have a couple mics so we can come around. Yes. Um, if you were to start off um, being a software engineer, do you think you would have stayed with that job? That is a good question. If I started off as a software engineer, do you think I would have stayed with a job? And my answer is I think I would because I've started to recognize the power that comes with learning how to build things with technology. 
Um, I could be anywhere in the world, I can pull out a computer and I can literally build something. And so even if I were in a role where I got a little bored with something, I can always switch to a different field because there's a lot of different kinds of engineering. So you could get into gaming, for example, and build games for people, or get into virtual reality, or you could get into back-end work or front-end work. So there's so many different areas that you can pivot to that I do believe if I had started in the beginning, I would still be doing software engineering. How long have you been living here? I have been living here for about nine years. So I came out to California in 2000, yeah, 2009. Um, and yeah, I've been here ever since. I've never left, so right after college. Are you close to your sister? And if you are, does she support you in this? Yes, and yes. So I am very close to my sister. Like I mentioned, she's only 18 months, like a year and a half older. So there were times where people thought we were twins. My parents used to dress us alike, so that was probably the reason too. So we were very close to each other. And I talked to her like several times a week as well. And she has been very encouraging along this journey. Even back when I was trying to do this, um, and explaining to them that I wanted to be an engineer. My parents and my sister weren't exactly sure what an engineer was, but they were like, if you want to do it, we're behind you 100%. And so, yeah, she's been very supportive through this. Could you do me a favor and explain to them uh, the importance of recognizing where this begins in science and when they're in school and choosing classes and courses, if they want to get on this pathway to whatever, could you explain the importance of them at however early they see it to take advantage. Explain that to them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm happy to explain that. So she wants me to explain like the importance of choosing your classwork early if you want to get into a field like this. And so if you're gonna study computer science in school, it is really important to get into the math and science fields early. Like when you're younger, it's a little easier to pick it up than if you kind of neglect all the science and math classes and then in college try to do it, you're gonna have a little harder of a time. Um, but I will say that computer science, I've, I've learned, and this is just my personal opinion, uh, I've learned that computer science is a lot different than software engineering. And so when you go to school and study computer science, they are setting you up to be a computer scientist, and you will understand a lot about computers and the theory behind how computers work. Software engineering is more about the application of that field. And so I've, I've noticed sometimes when we get interns who are studying computer science to come work in corporate America, it's a little bit hard of a transition because what they're learning in school isn't quite teaching them how to do the job in corporate America. So I would encourage you on top of doing the math and science classes like to come to programs like this to practice your coding as well because unless you want to do like research-based computer science, getting out into like an actual software engineering job, you're going to need to learn how to apply it. So just picking the classes based on where you want to go is important to do early so it's not so hard once you get to college. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? It doesn't have to be about anything I talked about either. Does anyone have anything amazing they've done recently they want to share with the group? I just talked about sharing accomplishments. Yeah. Um, well, like, um, actually, yesterday, I wanted to be an engineer, but I didn't know what kind of engineer I wanted mm -hmm. to be. So um, then I realized that I like building mm -hmm. and I also like stars. So I decided that I want to be an aerospace engineer. Wow, congratulations on figuring that out. Can we give her a round of applause for figuring out what she wants to be? That's awesome. Does anyone else have any amazing accomplishments they want to share with the group? Yeah? Um, I just, like, has, I got my spot in a cheerleader and being a backspotter, and mainly because I got too old for, like, all my science after school classes, oh, wow. I got too old and they wouldn't let me do them anymore, mm -hmm. so I got into cheer, and I'm happy about being a backspotter, because being a backspotter, you get to control the actual stunt, nice. and it's, like, it's kind of like coding because you like control how the people do things yeah. and how the flyer goes up and how fast they come down. So I think it's fun like being a backspotter like that because it allows me to be in control. That's awesome. Congratulations on getting on the cheer squad. I was also a cheerleader in high school, so I was one of the, the base as well. I wasn't a backspotter, but I know what you mean. Any other questions? Well, the good news is that Angela's gonna be hanging out with us for a while, and she's gonna be here with us during lunch, so 
Maybe if you're a little too shy right now to ask her a question, you'll have plenty of time to do so. In addition to that, she will be giving autographs, so I encourage you to get your T-shirt signed and get lots of pictures with her as well. We have a fun career board, lots of props, lots of fun stuff. Now to wrap this up real quick, one final question. You know, I think it's so important that um, all of us hear about your career path and how it changed so much because I think for a lot of professionals, that is the case. You don't necessarily start where, you know, you think you're going to and end up somewhere completely different. Yeah. So what are some final words of advice that you want to give to these students today as they think about maybe they know what they want to do in the future, but maybe they don't? And what kind of advice do you have for them moving forward? Yeah, so the advice I would have is to just explore your interest, right? You don't have to have it all figured out. I know I just said that if you know what you want to be, it's good to like figure out your classes early. But if you don't know, it's OK. Take the classes you like. And as you go along, you'll learn the things that you like and don't like, and that'll help you shape your path. And like I mentioned before, even if you try something now and stick with it for several years, like I did with, you know, for example, acting, it's OK if you don't pursue it in the long term, because you have that experience. So I would say if something interests you today, go explore it, check it out. If it doesn't interest you next week, try something else. And that's a great way to you know, get used to trying different things and how to learn quickly when you try a different thing. So don't be afraid if you have to jump around before you find where you're going to Lands finally, yeah. One more, go for one it. More. <laughs> um, were your parents strict about the um, yes ma'am, no ma'am, <laughs> polite thing? Yes, so um, I, this, it, being born in Little Rock, I'm sure you maybe have a little experience with Southern parents. So my parents were very strict with the yes ma'am, no sir kind of thing. Um, and we were very strict with like our bedtimes and like if they said something, you better do it the first time they say it, not the second time. So yeah, they were, they were very strict. But I think that helped me have a lot of discipline going on through life. Like, you know, I, I knew how to study when I needed to study and put boundaries for myself to get things done. So that kind of, uh, those boundaries that they gave me were very helpful growing up. All right, thank you.